school district or is it at large? Your county judge is the whole county, but a precinct is just a precinct, right? Yeah. If it's college, they have a college board in Midland, that's at large. So know who the voters are that you want to represent. I ran in 2019 and I lost. I ran in a district no minority had ever filed to run in that district ever. Sometimes it's good to be the first. Guess that one? Glenn's such a great idea, right? But I learned. I worked on seven other campaigns. So this is where getting involved. Look at who's running. Being in New York City, being a prosecutor in law enforcement, I was Republican. I leaned to the right because I believe in law and order, the rule of law. In El Paso, you guys are surrounded by Democrats. How do you think it was for me in New York City? <laughs> I know what that feeling is like to feel like you're outnumbered and surrounded. Why don't I just give up and give in? I can be a Democrat. Know who your audience is. Know the district. Look at precinct four here. You have a candidate out here passing out pieces of paper. That's a go-getter. Blanca Trout's out here saying, all right, here's get to know me. You have, I think, three or four Republicans running in precinct four here, and there's three Democrats. That means that they're divided. The Democrats are divided and the Republicans to some degree, but at least you're getting out there and trying to change things. Don't give up. So in 19, I lost. It was tough, but I learned. It's like when you were on that bicycle and they took off the training wheels. Was it fun to fall off? Were you a little scared? Yeah, that's life. You're gonna continue to learn. But sometimes failure, adversity, that's what teaches us. And I tell my mom that, I said, you know, mom, I felt like you were kind of hard on me and I always feel like the piece of metal between the anvil and you're the hammer and this is me. <laughs> it taught me that when I look at something that might scare me, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna face something that might petrify me, but you know how courage works? You do the thing you're most scared of first and then you get the courage to do it. <laughs> it kind of backwards, but that's kind of how it is. Don't let fear take hold of you and prevent you from getting out there and doing something, public speaking. This wasn't always easy for me. I remember the first time I did this in high school and my heart was beating and I'm just, oh man, they're all looking at me. What if I say the wrong thing? What if, what if I don't sound good? The more you do it, the more comfortable you'll feel. And especially if you're passionate about it. So going back to the passion, if you believe in it, and if you talk to people in your community and they're like, you know, somebody should do something about that. And that's how you feel then go out there, put your name on the ballot and then run for it. But like I said, know your audience. So I ran at large in Midland, no Hispanics, almost all Republican except for one district. And I was facing two incumbents that had been there for over a decade. Well, one was, had been there over a decade, the other one had been there for seven and a half years. And nobody said I could win. I'd already lost once. You think they wanted to support me again? But when I talked and when I got up there, what I knew, they could not outwork me. Mm -hmm. One thing that will take you a long way, and as Hispanics, I'll tell you, this is just, just our culture, work ethic. Mm -hmm. You cannot outwork me. So I block walk more than they did. I got on the radio more than they, look, Bobby Everly's here, knowing the importance of radio. Mm -hmm. Who is your audience? Look at your demography. That word is one of those big fancy words, and all it means is, are they younger, are they older? Take a second to look around this room. Seriously, like, don't look at me. Look at everybody else here. You have a wide variety of younger people, of Hispanics, of Caucasian. Know who your audience is when you're running. Are you running in a presidential year or a gubernatorial year or an off year? When I first ran, it was a presidential year. What do you think the turnout was like? Super high. In Midland, and this is Midland, right? Top, our population is 150. 70,000 people came out. And my opponent in the district race got 2,800 votes. I got 900, okay? But people that ran at large got 70,000 votes amongst them split up. So when I ran again this past year, it was an off year. Nobody was running for governor. Nobody was running for president. And then I started looking at the numbers historically. How much do people vote in that time? So I won with less than, it was less than 5,000 votes. One, one person got 4,000, I got 3,000 and change. In an off year, which was for a whole city that had 70,000. So who comes out to vote? Older people came out to vote. Those are those historic voters. 
So know who is your audience. How do you get out to them? We were talking earlier about social media. The older people are not on that as much. So what did I do? Newspaper, radio, going to rotary clubs, going to those things. Now I didn't neglect the younger voters, but depending on when your year is, right? Social media. I advertised on social media a lot. I was on there almost every day and I walked in places. Here's the one thing that I wasn't prepared for. You're that guy. You're that guy on Facebook I see every day. And I say, yeah, that's me. I'm that guy. I'm running for city council. Are you registered to vote? No. I became a deputized voter registrar. You know what my favorite thing was when they said, no, I'm not registered. And they kind of just wanted to walk away. I followed them. I can register you. <laughs> now, are you going to do that with everybody? No, because some of them are going to be like, you know, I really don't want to talk to you about it. I really don't want to get too involved with voting. But the energy that you have, that rubs off on people. Like, this guy wants to make a change. This guy wants to do something. Look at who the incumbents are. If they're a liaison, like uh, animal services, the, the, the animal shelter, we had a liaison from city council, never showed up. We had a parks and rec advisory committee, the liaison from city council, never showed up. So look at if they're doing their job, make sure you're doing yours, because if you go there and you get that education and you know that, you're going to your plan. Don't go by a cookie cutter plan. Distinguish yourself. Right now it's a gubernatorial election. How many places on the ballot? In Midland, there's like 30 something people on the ballot. How do you get people to know who are you? What are you gonna do different? Why does your race matter? Because depending, if you're running for treasurer, that's not as sexy, right, as precinct commissioner or county judge. People are like treasurer, district clerk, things of that nature, right? So those are some of the things that you want to pay attention to is how can I get people to know who I am and what I do differently? And that's where you really get them in. What is your plan? Yard signs, check. Four by eight signs check okay door hangers block walking almost everybody's doing that what are you going to do that distinguishes you from that so volunteer to do things don't wait until you're running you should already want to be a part of your community and see how you can help do meals on wheels one time it will really give you an idea of what the people in your community how, how some people live not everybody is as fortunate Right? Don't let this suit, fool you. this suit fool you. I have had to live on ramen noodles on more than one time in my life because I was going to work all day and then going to college at night. It's not easy. Not everybody has a silver spoon. And even those that do, that doesn't mean you're a bad person, but get time to spend in your community where they get to know you better. So what is part of that plan? You can't run a campaign broke. The first time around that I ran, extremely difficult I was trying to figure out how do I fundraise how do I get those George Soros is I think that one gentleman <laughs> how, how do I get them to write me a check versus my opponent sometimes that will happen sometimes it won't be practical when you go to the grocery store sometimes you'll look does it have to be a particular type of bread or can you buy the store brand bread and it's just as good for a hot dog when you're campaigning does it have to be, oh, I'm gonna take a $5,000 ad in a newspaper? Or can you find a better way to get your message out there, right? Just printing paper copies of something like Blanca Trout did and just handing them out. That's very practical. So learn how to spend your money wisely. Raising it if you can get it, it doesn't have to be a $10,000 check. It could be a $100 check. But if people see that you're willing to get out there and work for it, they'll be more willing to support you. Mm -hmm. You know, they really will. A lot of the questions, I ran such a, I, here's, here's one thing, and I don't typically toot my own horn, but I will on this one. I ran my city council campaign like I was running for Congress. Everyone that spoke to me said, I have never seen someone run for city council do that. I had a white, a Conaline van. We put the sign, you know, with the sticker on it. It was 500 bucks. But everywhere I drove, you know where I parked that thing in the parking lot? <laughs> On the main streets, so everybody knew I was there. I was out there with t-shirts. And no, you can't sell them. But when you give out enough t-shirts, it doesn't have to be a fancy t-shirt, but make sure your logo or your name is visible. 
How many of y'all have driven past a four by eight sign and you're trying to drive and read it and you can't figure out what are they, who is it, what's the name, and what are they running for, right? Make sure those things are very clear. I'm running for city council district four, Corrales, or I'm running for precinct four commissioner, Gonzalez, right? Make sure that you stand out. So I'd have those t-shirts and I would ask people, hey, would you mind sending me a picture or posting that on Facebook when you see somebody at HEB or the supermarket? And so people would start doing that. Like, I see your t-shirt everywhere. So one thing that people could say is, I don't necessarily know who Dan Corrales is, but I've seen that sign everywhere. I had 60 four by eight signs up. I put out as many yard signs, pick a corner. A corner for a yard sign has more value than a cul-de-sac. Think about that. It makes sense because more people will see it. So be strategic in what you do. Think about how that will affect things when you're limited on your resources. Early voting and school schedules. This is probably maybe unique <clears throat> to Midland because we changed our academic calendar. But in Midland, school started at the end of August. And this year they changed it to the beginning of August. And my incumbent opponents well, traditionally in Midland, nobody got out uh, four by eight signs or started campaigning until September because Labor Day weekend, they were on vacation, but this year it was different. I had a whole extra month to campaign and I didn't even do that. I started, I announced in June. I was out there walking, talking to people months ahead of everyone else. Here's what I tell you, your yard sign and your four by eight placements, you know what everybody was doing this past couple weeks for the primary. Hey, can I put a sign over there? Oh, so-and-so's already got one up. You missed your opportunity. The early bird really does get the worm. You gotta work, and that gets back to the work ethic. Work hard, get up with that mindset. Yeah, I can do this, I can win. Don't talk to people, oh, I'm not sure how this is going. Even if you have concerns, and be reserved, keep those to yourself, but Go out there and let people know that you're energetic. If you are married, if you have family, they will support you. That is one of the things that I love my wife for. She was there for me, she understood. During that campaign, there are gonna be long days. You need people there. Not only to support you, but to be a spokesperson for you as well. There's a lot of circles that my wife travels, I ain't there. They have like wine and shoes for women where they all go out, you know, have some wine and, and, and it's like, it's a real function. I'm not gonna be there. But my spouse was talking to people. Get to know people outside your circle. Sometimes we get like into the high school mentality. This is, this is who I know. This is who I'm gonna hang out with. Reach out to others. Most importantly, now in Midland, here's what's funny. I tell them to focus on the Hispanic vote because there aren't a lot of Hispanics. Here, that's the majority. I think it's almost 85, 90%. Okay, that doesn't mean ignore Caucasians or ignore African Americans or ignore other people. You should always be reaching out. Don't limit it to say, well, they're not Republican. Here's the one thing I'll tell you I learned about being an at-large. At-large in city council is not partisan. And I had a lot of other Republicans, and Midland is predominantly Republican, so if you're a Democrat, it's almost the reverse of what y'all have here, right? My job is to represent everyone in this city equally, regardless of by what name you call God, if you're Baptist, if you're Lutheran, if you're Catholic, regardless if you're black, white, Hispanic, regardless of whether you speak English or Spanish. And even with the political affiliation, I am Republican, I'm conservative, I believe in God, that is my spiritual compass, that gives me direction. I believe in family. When you're brought into this world, that's the people most closest to you, and when you live through it, and when you're about to leave it, they're the ones most likely to stick by you. Country. I love this country. It gave my mom and my family opportunities that they didn't have in a third world country. And Americans share that. So maybe we disagree. I'm for life, I'm not for abortion. So I can agree to disagree on that. But when you're running, there is more, I think, in Hispanics that are conservative, even though they say they're liberal, that they don't realize. Especially when it comes to being Catholic or believing in God, 
being against abortion, being for marriage, those things really do unite us. So when somebody says, well, you know, and this is particularly important in a nonpartisan race, I'm a Democrat, you're a Republican. I won my race with 490 votes from a South and East side of Midland, which has been predominantly Democrat for 40 years. I had Democrats to say, I don't vote for Republicans, but I will vote for you. Mm-hmm. Because I took the time to hear them out and they even quoted me that in the paper, like to kind of give me a black eye. <laughs> I will sit down and have coffee with the Democrat. I do not subscribe to the tenant that just because they are not Republican that I will not hear them out. Does that mean I agree with them? No, that doesn't mean I agree with them. What is the best thing about this country is you listen to other people to understand why do they think that way? And it's not that I'm gonna agree with them, but it gives me the opportunity to talk to Democrats that don't realize, you know what? They're not a Democrat at all. They're conservative. (laughs) They're more comfortable saying conservative, but they really are, they're Republican. And that's the thing that really resonated about my campaign is that I didn't exclude anyone. I talked to as many different people and because I happened to be bilingual, I spoke in Spanish too. I put out flyers in Spanish, right? Don't forget to reach out. There is a huge population in Midland now from Asia. I went and spoke to some of them and I said, hey, can you translate this for me? We even have someone that is running for precinct commissioner who is Caucasian. She came to a Republican National Hispanic Assembly debate and she finished it with, muchas gracias por esta oportunidad. Thank you for this opportunity. People will remember when you reach out. They really will. If you have any questions, I'm all ears. Well, here's one thing that I will say. Understand how your city government works. Because the one thing that I do when I'm there at council is I ask questions. And just because that's how they've done it, that does not mean that's how we will do it. I ask and I say, why? And that, for newcomers, they can be very timid. They don't want to rock the boat. (laughs) Here is what I'm going to tell you rock the boat exactly go in there be assertive and if they say oh well you're the new guy you're the new woman (laughs) yes i am Mm -hmm. but i'm here to learn and i want to know how i can make a difference and the only way that i know how to do that is by asking questions there are no stupid questions there are only people that are too afraid to ask them and then that's when they have the upper hand because information How can you make an informed decision if you don't ask the questions to have the information?